Today we're going to file an oil and gas case in ECF. Um, we're currently on the advanced search, the default landing page, whenever you're logged in as an external user. And from this page, I'm going to select from the left menu, filing. And whenever I select filing, I can select to file a new case or file in an existing case. Since we're gonna file a new case today, I'm gonna to select that option. And whenever I select that option, I am presented with the steps of filing a new case. On the initiation step, you're warned that once completing this step, you cannot go back and must start the filing over. The program area and docket type that you select limits what reliefs and what document types that you'll select in the future steps. So it's important that we select the correct division and docket type in this first initiation step. I'm gonna file an oil and gas case in the conservation docket and select next. On this step, I'm limited or filtered uh, to the list of reliefs that are in the conservation docket. And I'm going to file a multi-unit horizontal well case today. Um, with oil and gas cases, you'll notice that the relief is a single select. And I am also allowed to enter a relief sought as it appears on the application. If there's uh, information that's important to capture in the relief or in the caption of the case, you can copy the application's caption and paste that information here. It's not a required field for oil and gas cases, so I'm going to move to the next step. For oil and gas cases, because we allow um, the uh, filer to establish the case either in Oklahoma City or Tulsa, you're allowed to select your preferred hearing venue. It's defaulted to Oklahoma City, but if I needed to change that, I could. And also, uh, I'm going to be asked the question, is the legal description on the application statewide? Most oil and gas cases, it is not statewide, so it's defaulted to no. But if it were a statewide case, I could select yes here. I'm going to go ahead and select next to move to the next step. So I'm filing an oil and gas case. I'm required to put in a legal location if it is not a statewide application. So on this legal location step, I am going to add my legal location. One of the limitations in the legacy software that uh, the OCC uses is you could only enter one legal location. In ECF, you can enter more than one legal location. Basically, the definition of that is to have a different section township range, uh, like if I had section three and section 10, that would be two different legal locations. So I'm gonna enter two legal locations. And this is just uh, to help make sure that we enter the correct number of legal locations. It validates that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select add legal location and add my first, select the meridian, enter my section, my township, and my range. In the formations field, um, ECF has been preloaded with a number of the common formations that are in uh, Oklahoma, and so I can begin searching and find that formation. If I do um, not find the formation that is on my application, I can select other. Basically, I can type the word other. Whenever I do that, I select other and I, another column is added for other formation, and you can type in what that other formation is. Once I've selected the formation, um, I can select my county. Just start typing, and again, it will give you a list to choose from, and I can select that county. Both the formations uh, field and the counties field allow more than one per legal location. So if you're on the county line uh, bordering two different counties for your uh, legal location, that is um, ECF is capable of handling that. So I'm going to go ahead and enter my second legal location.
Okay. So once I've input the information for my second legal location and saved that, you notice that my next button became available. Um, I entered that I was going to enter two legal locations that validated that, and I can move to the next step. Um, any point in this process, if I needed to go back and make changes, um, I would be able to do that once I'm past that initiation step. Again, that's the only step that we don't allow you to go back and modify. So I'm going to go ahead and select Next. And whenever I select Next, I can add my party. I'm on the party step. So I'm going to go ahead and select Add Party. And here I can search for an existing party in ECF. Uh, we are going to be carrying forward many cases that currently exist in the legacy software. Um, they will finish out in ECF. So those cases may already exist in ECF, and the parties to those cases may already be in the database. You can do the search. And if you find the party that is appropriate, you can select that party. If you do a search and the party is not in the database, you can select this Create New Party button, and you would fill out a form to provide the party information and be able to select that party as the party to the case. So I'm going to select uh, New Field. We're basing this off of a real life uh, scenario. So this uh, party has been loaded in our database, and I'm going to go ahead and select that they are the applicant. You must select the party type for the party that you're adding to this case. Uh, if needed, you could select more than one party um, or add more than one party. I'm just going to add new field in this uh, demo today and then move back or move to the next step. So I've moved to the document step. And on the document step, I'm going to select the party that I'm filing on behalf of this particular document. Um, because I'm filing a new case, it's logical that the party that I added in the previous step is the party I would select for this document. Um, this is a similar uh, form that we use in filing an existing case. Uh, so we do allow you to add a new party here. Maybe the party um, is not already a party to the case, like if you're filing an entry of appearance or something like that. Um, but in this and filing a new case step, um, we're going to go ahead and select new field. That's who we added on the party step. And I'm going to go ahead and select main document. Um, this is the step where I'm going to upload the document to the case that's initiating the case. Um, we do provide a warning, a caution, and redaction notice. Basically, you must make sure that you've redacted any confidential information from your document before you upload it. Um, it will be public information once it is um, submitted and uh, filed. So at this point, I'm going to select Browse and locate the document that I need to upload. Whenever I do upload this, um, it's validating that the file type is a PDF. That's the allowed file type for ECF. It validates the file size, um, that it is within the limit, and it also is doing a virus scan. From that point, we're going to select a document category. Whenever I select a document category, the document types that follow are filtered by that category. So I selected appearances, and these are the list of documents that are in that appearance category. We're filing a new case, so we're going to look for the initiating document type uh, category, and then we'll be able to select the document type application from that list. So I'm going to go ahead and select Upload. So after I upload, I am uh, presented with the document that I have uploaded, uh, recapping that information. If I needed to edit or delete it or change it, I could do that. Um, if I had an attachment, it's common um, to file some types of applications where they might have an Exhibit A or Exhibit uh, B, those uh, types of documents, I recommend that you make those a separate document, separate files, and you can upload those as attachments. That'll create separate docket entries for those attachments that are related to the main document and makes those easier to find um, in the case docket. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and select Next. Whenever I select Next, I'm going to be on the Review step. This is the final step before the uh, Pay and Submit. If there is a filing fee for the case, you're going to have to pay the filing fee to be able to submit the case. Um, on this review step, you basically are going to get a recap of the party that you're filing on behalf of, who this is filed by, um, the filing fee if there is one for the case, and in this instance, 
instance, it's a conservation docket case with the $200 filing fee. Again, recap of the documents that have been uploaded. Um, again, if you need to make any changes, this is the point where you'd want to go back to one of the prior steps and modify whatever needs to be modified. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and select pay and submit. And it's going to redirect me to the credit card portal where I will enter some basic information to pay the filing fee. Okay, so I'm in the credit card portal at this point. Um, I'm presented with the transaction detail. The filing fee for this case is $200. There is a non-refundable service fee of $6 in this instance. And if I scroll down, there is a simple form. Um, the required fields are notated by the asterisk. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete this form. Once I've completed the form, you can see that the highlights changed to green and I can move to the next step. And on this page, again, I've got the transaction detail and I can enter my credit card information. Again, the required fields are notated by the asterisk. Okay, I'm gonna select next. And on this page, this is basically a recap of the information that we've entered for the credit card. Again, we've got our transaction summary. At this point, I would print this page. Um, it's good documentation to have if you intend to rebill your client um, for that uh, filing fee and the uh, non-refundable service fee. Um, if I'm good with this, I can click submit payment. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit this payment. And what it's doing is processing that payment. And once it's finished with that, it's going to redirect us back to ECF and we'll be able to review the complete transaction. Okay, so we are back in ECF and we are presented with the case number for the case that we've filed. We have the case name, who it was filed by, the docket text for the docket entries that uh, resulted from this transaction. And because I am an Oklahoma attorney that is a registered ECF user, I am automatically added to the service list whenever I file a new case in ECF. And I will receive an electronic notification of that filing in my email. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and select that link to the case so we can take a look at the case and see what that looks like. Okay, so I'm in the case in ECF and I've given basic information, um, the case number, the date it was filed, um, the location or the preferred hearing venue, the program area, the docket type, case name, the status of the case. I'm on the details tab, which recaps the relief information. Um, with oil and gas cases, we'll have a legal locations tab. And if I select that, I will be able to see the legal locations that were added. And I can then also look at the service list to see the service list that resulted from an Oklahoma attorney filing this case. And I can look at the docket tab, which will present the activity that resulted from that filing. Um, this case, we have a couple of different docket types. We've got the document for the initiating uh, this case. We have the two financial transactions, the invoice and the receipt um, that resulted from the credit card payment. There could also be events or hearings on this uh, tab or text docket entries. Uh, so any activity that happens in the case that is added to the case docket would appear here. So on the docket tab, there is a download documents option. If I select download documents, this is going to create a zip file with all the documents that have been filed in this case um, or on this case docket. Um, so you can see that it opened up um, a zip file and any files, any documents that have been uploaded will be in this uh, zip file. Um, they are labeled with the division, docket type, and the uh, uh, document type um, information. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And also you'll notice that there is a print, print docket list button. This will present print the docket list report. And so you can see an example of that. We've got the uh, 
case uh, name with the case number, the legal location information, the division relief, uh, the county, um, the service list, and the proceedings that um, have happened in this case on that docket list report. Okay, and the last tab that would be in the case is the events tab. This is wh where we would see any hearings. Um, you will have that in the docket tab, but on the events tab itself would be just a very concise brief view of hearings that have been scheduled. So if you needed to see the date, the time, the location, that kind of information, um, easy to access um, on that events tab. That is filing an oil and gas case um, in ECF. Thank you.